Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Cascone, the Lactation Program Manager at Cats Women's Hospital at North Shore University Hospital. And I'm joined by Maureen McCormick, the Lactation Program Manager at Cats Women's Hospital at Long Island Jewish Medical Center. On behalf of the Cats Institute for Women's Health, we are excited to expand this video library and bring to you this module about continuing your breastfeeding journey after discharge from the hospital. Here's Maureen to get us started. I'm gonna start by talking about the first few days and weeks at home. Frequent feeding builds a good supply. Remember that the baby's demand for milk is what brings in the volumes of milk needed. Frequent feeding helps the baby get enough to eat and build your supply. Be flexible, be patient with yourself and the baby. You're both learning something new. Sometimes a position that works one day doesn't work the next. Something different may work better. Learning to feed your baby is a process. Keep working at it together. Continue to follow your baby's feeding cues for hunger and fullness. Continue to practice safe skin to skin and safe sleep at all times. Getting short naps anytime is the best way to go. This will help you manage being awake at night when babies tend to feed more often. Welcome visitors that help. Ask for help so that you can focus on recovering and feeding. See the pediatrician in 24 to 48 hours and know when and how to get help. You should also know the warning signs to watch for in your baby and yourself and contact your doctor before that time if necessary. Your hospital's discharge instructions will have more details. Know who to call and when to call and get the help you need. For non-urgent breastfeeding support, contact the lactation consultant at the hospital you delivered at. At the end of the first week of the baby's life, it's good to review this checklist to help you be sure that things are going well, or if you need to call the pediatrician. Things are going well if your baby has eight to 12 feedings in each 24 hour period. If you can see sucking and swallowing with brief pauses during the feeding, your sense is that the baby is calm and relaxed during the feeding. The baby is content after most feeds. The baby's making enough wet and dirty diapers every day. The baby's latch is comfortable for you. After feeding, your nipple is not pinched or flattened on one side. And you notice that after feeding, your breasts feel softer. Think about calling the baby's doctor if your baby is sleepy and has less than eight feeds in 24 hours. If your baby always falls asleep soon after latching or goes on and off the breast frequently during the feeding, or refuses to breastfeed. If your baby is not having enough wet and dirty diapers each day, if you have pain in your breasts or your nipples, that's not going away. If your nipple comes out of the baby's mouth looking pinched or flattened on one side, if you cannot tell if the baby is swallowing any milk, or if you think the baby needs more milk than you're making, you should call your doctor right away. Prepare to maintain breastfeeding when you're back to work or going to be away from your baby. Take a minute, minute to check in with yourself. What's working? What do you need to change? Take your equipment out. Take your pump out. Look at the instructions. Talk to people about flange sizes, settings. Always refer back to the hospital you delivered in if you'd like some advice about starting the process. Check out the CDC breastfeeding website to make sure you know how to store your milk safely and properly clean and sanitize your pump kit after pumping. Good pump kit hygiene is important as it keeps your stored milk safe for the baby. Start pumping after a feeding once or twice to get familiar with it. Do both breasts at the same time, 15 to 20 minutes. Have realistic expectations. Don't expect, expect much volume. There will be smaller volumes after feeding. This is okay. You're just starting to build your supply. Store the milk you get to start your stash. And as Rachel says, take another nap. You can never go wrong doing that. 
So now that breastfeeding has gotten into a good rhythm, you can begin to express your milk to prepare for the time away from the baby. Start pumping each day. After one feeding or two feedings at the most, don't pump after every feeding so you prevent oversupply issues. Follow milk storage guidelines from the CDC breastfeeding website and freeze your milk for use later. Keep breastfeeding, keep enjoying the baby, and as always, keep napping. When breastfeeding is well established, this is a big step. You're gonna pick a day to have someone feed your express milk to your baby. Your partner or anyone else but you gets to feed the baby. This is exciting for your family. Timing is up to you. Nighttime, dinner time, whatever feels right. Pump for the missed breastfeeding. Store the milk for the next feeding. Be consistent so that your baby gets used to being fed by someone other than you. Sometimes this takes time, so you want to be ready. This is also a good time to start using a pacifier when your baby naps or at bedtime to decrease the risk of SIDS. After about six weeks or so, things really start to get easy. You'll notice that the feedings take less time as the baby gets older and more efficient at feeding. Also, the baby will start to go for longer stretches at night, which means you and your partner get to have longer stretches at night too. At this point, you might be ready for a night out away from the baby. Get ready to have some fun. Finally, the time has come. Here are some tips for being away from your baby. You got this. Make sure there's enough milk for the day or the time you're leaving your baby for. The person that will be caring and feeding your baby your milk should know how to handle your express milk safely. Make sure you have your pump supplies ready, your milk storage containers, and if needed, a cooler bag for storing your milk. Before your first day back to work or away from your baby, find out where you will be pumping and where the employee lactation space is located and how to access it. Know your rights about break time as a lactating parent. Enjoy the connection with your baby before you leave for work and when you get home. You both will really enjoy this time together. Continuing your breastfeeding journey can be a very rewarding experience. Global recommendations are to feed your milk and only your milk for about six months. Continue to feed your milk as you introduce other nutritious foods and solid foods to the baby. And then continue for two years or longer as desired. And as this continues to provide many health benefits for you and the baby. Thank you so much for letting us be part of your breastfeeding journey. Support changes everything, so please reach out to us with any specific questions or concerns. We are here to help. The upcoming slides will have information so that you can connect with the lactation department at your specific Northwell birthing facility. There's also some general information and websites that everyone can access. Please reach out to us anytime. If we can't help you ourselves, we can help connect you with someone in your community that can.